Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to more of The Swapper. Last time, we managed to get off that planet's surface and up to Space Station Thesis. Though it appears we don't have any kind of a welcome party waiting for us. There is plenty of background decorations, though, and flavor text to tell us this was more than likely the focal point of getting between the planet's surface and the space station itself. Sadly, though, it seems that maybe this place hasn't seen much use in a while. There are plenty of these spacesuits, though, and they look very much like our own, so at least we might be human. But I wonder what this rock is. Hi there. That was strange. Yeah, walking near this rock causes some dialogue to pop up. Nothing spoken, just words in our mind? Quite possibly. Yeah, we are in a brand new area. Looks like there's plenty of map to look around in, so I guess we're just going to go ahead and press forward. This lovely sprawling hallway, and we get some very much needed lighting effects, along with quite possibly some foreshadowing shadowing of some places we are going to be going in the future. If anything, though, it allows us to take in plenty of wonderful visual effects and the lovely aesthetic of the game. I don't know, something though about the, the silence is just incredibly off-putting. Kind of gives the impression that we are in a well-lit tomb rather than a space station. But it looks like we have another one of these mysterious rocks here. And this one has a little bit more information for us, rather than a simple hello. This one informs us that maybe these rocks are watchers? I'm sure we'll be learning more about that later. For now, though, we do have a little bit more mechanics to get out of the way. Our spaceman here can move around light objects, and it will become necessary to solve some puzzles and get up on some higher platforms later. Offsite quarantine procedures engaged. Well, it appears we are a bit trapped. Because we're gonna have to figure out some way to turn off this quarantine. is that I'm assuming this console is what we're going to need to operate, but we are going to need another encryption orb. We also see here that some more items are populated on the map, such as another one of those rocks, and the console itself showing us how many orbs we need and how many we currently have. So without further ado, let's go ahead and solve a few more puzzles. Now, they still aren't going to be too dramatically difficult. For now, we're going to have to deal with a combination of both red and blue lights, but we have pretty much enough tools to conquer all of these uh, problems. Since we can't make a clone in the red, we're just going to have to walk one of our buddies over into the blue section. And after we have him over there, it's easy enough to switch places with him and pick up our encryption orb. Now, 
Also, before we leave the room, we have a memory terminal to check out. Seems this one is just talking about the quarantine that had to be enacted for some mysterious reason, possibly due to those rock samples that we've been running into. Speaking of which, we will be keeping a record of those in our log as well. We can see what every one of those watchers tells us. Hopefully they might be able to elucidate a little bit more about what happened here. Next up, we might as well check out to the right here. I mean, we can go ahead and operate the console, but we might as well explore as much as we can. Now, things get a little bit more complicated in this room. We have a single box with three different switches, and more than likely, we are going to need to press all of them. We see that this far right switch causes that door to open up. And if we go ahead and check out the other switch we'll qu real quick, we're going to have to use a box for that one as well. Since our spaceman has no ability to crouch. See that that switch opens the other door. So the solution is simple enough. We want to depress the switch to the right using our butt as a means of propulsion. And then we want to have one of our buddies waiting up there. We want to be careful though that we are next to the box so that we don't cause our buddy to moonwalk off that cliff and die. And now after we depress the other switch, our buddy can walk on to the final remaining switch allowing us access to the encryption orb. You always get a good sense of accomplishment when you work in tandem with such smart individuals. I do feel bad about leaving them behind, but I'm sure they go to a better place once that light evaporates them. But we're going to go ahead and check out the final door up here. With some lovely foreground rocks giving a bizarre twisted sense of perspective, along with a few more of these watchers. The Watchers kind of have a bizarre range of thought, ranging from very philosophical to pretty incoherent, I suppose. Does wear tick. Still, though, it's really hard to draw any assumptions at this point as to what the Watchers are or why they can talk to us, but. It's re neither here nor there. We pretty much explored what we can, so we're going to go ahead and turn off quarantine. But first, we got our first secret. Yeah, if we examine the roof in this room, we can see there is some areas where we can make one of our buddies. And if we're very quick, we can find a little passageway hidden up here, hidden in the uh, the foreground area. What do we find hidden away but a memory terminal? Now these memory terminals start off pretty optimistic. They seem to be messages from what I assume to be Earth. And they give us an idea of just what purpose Theseus was, which looks to be some unprecedented opportunity. Maybe for research, maybe for exploration. It's a bit hard to say. But we will be finding all of these hidden terminals throughout the game. There are, I'm wanting to say, ten total. And 
But let's go ahead and turn off quarantine. Quarantine disengaged. Attention, hull breach in sector one. Emergency personnel to waste management. Well, I guess that's where we're going to be heading next. I mean, we are not emergency emergency personnel, but hopefully that should at least guarantee that maybe some people will be there waiting. So we are in a pretty large room here. We have a memory terminal and a console waiting for us. We're still a bit short on orbs, so we're going to have to be on the lookout for those, but we are going to have to be pretty careful. This is going to be a pretty far drop. The good news is that something I haven't mentioned before, but whenever you do have the swapper with a clone out, it will slow down time, allowing you to make split-second decisions at a much more reasonable pace. Pace. Though, our buddy had to make the ultimate sacrifice to make sure that we survived that fall. But nothing too important on this memory terminal here. The one thing of interest is some mention of Xeno samples. Possibly those are the watchers, possibly it's something else. And it's another person. Well, that's good news for us. It's nice to know we're not completely alone out here, but looks like we are going to have to operate this mechanism here to chase after whoever that was. suppose we might as well head over to the left before. Head down into what appears to be the gardens. Sounds pretty lovely. And it is very lovely. We'll get some nice, soft, comforting music. Some change from the barren wastelands that we've been seeing, or the cold technology of those opening areas. We also have to start dealing with some of the more dangerous puzzles of the game. In this circumstance, we have no means of getting up there. We have a particularly long shaft to head down into, so... The good news is, like I mentioned before, we can slow down time, so this isn't too difficult of a shot. And accompanied with the music, it feels like poetry in motion. But we do want to be careful. We need to not fall all the way down, otherwise we might die. Like that poor buddy down there. But with that encryption orb, the red light is now turned off up there, so... Oh! The dangers of space, you can never really be too careful. So let's not head down there. I'm not sure what that was, but yeah, this also gives us our first real chance to use kind of a daisy chain of swapping with our buddies to propel ourselves up very tall shafts. And that gives me something of an idea. You may have noticed in the previous room, there looked like there was something of an arrow pointing upwards. And the camera did draw our attention to it, so... Let's see if we can't use that knowledge we just gained to maybe head up to this unexplored hatch.
Simple enough. Though I do feel kind of worried about... I don't know, maybe I shouldn't worry about my buddies so much. But here we have another puzzle room. Doesn't look too complicated, just a tad bit daunting initially. But it has a simple enough solution. We're just going to use the knowledge we have just gained to get up here to pretty much keep ourselves daisy-chained up into the air while we wait for these pillars to slowly switch positions so we can get to that encryption orb. The one worry that you have to keep in mind is that you don't move forward too much to knock your buddy off the button and also that you don't wait too long to where you've passed underneath that blue gas. Because as you remember, we can't switch positions through the gas. Right? Actually, no, you can, but we can't make clones. That's, that's what I was thinking of, but I think that gas stretches all the way down to the bottom, so... Overall, though, the, the puzzles at the start really aren't too difficult. They're mostly just trial and error and getting you used to the mechanics that are going to be pretty pivotal for the rest of the game. If anything, though, it gets us a nice prolonged view of these lovely, almost claymation-esque backgrounds and just the lovely, lovely soundtrack. We just need one more orb. Before we head back though, I am a bit curious about this pit down here. It's definitely a lot deeper than I originally thought. And I can kind of hear static coming from the left. And the reason that is, is because there's another hidden terminal. This one is telling us, more or less, that there are another three of these space stations somewhere out in deep space. Not really close to us, but probably searching the endless bounds of the cosmos. And that, whomever sent it out, are pretty much looking forward to hearing back from them. Hopefully those other three stations are doing a little bit better than this one, considering how Incredibly vacant we've seen this one to be so far. But with that, we have pretty much scoured all of the gardens for right now. So I think we're going to head back to that one larger room with the six orb console and check out the other doorway waiting for us in there. up there in the far corner. I do sincerely like the mechanic of swapping in the game and using that as a means of propulsion. It's definitely an interesting gimmick all around. And the game really starts to stretch your imagination to figure out solving some of these puzzles. But it's not all in our mind. The game offers up plenty of lovely, lovely visuals. I think this room was one of the ones shown in the early screenshots for the game. Just a lovely view of the background and all the foliage. 
but in this puzzle we are introduced to a new form of light, this fuchsia or pink light here, blocks our beam and blocks any creation of clones inside, so it's pretty much a dead zone for any kind of clone or buddy manipulation. But we are going to need to use this button here at the end to get up into that area. And I think this was one of the first places in the game where it took me a few tries to figure out what they intended for you to do. But it's much in the same fashion as we used to propel ourselves forward. We can also use the buddy system here to make a system that will allow us to press that button by pretty much daisy chaining rather than upward forward. Yeah, our first buddy over there is keeping the button down. And there we go. We can now make our way after that person we saw earlier and maybe get a little information as to what's going on. First though, there is another door hidden up there and another memory terminal. This one causes a bit of worry. Some question about whether or not the greenhouse we're in will currently be safe against some unknown entity. I mean, we seem to be doing okay. We haven't run into any horrible aliens or face-hugging monsters, but something must have happened here. But after all the new mechanics that we have been introduced to, we are given a somewhat easier puzzle all around. We just have to make sure and take advantage of all the buddies that we can pop out into the world. Also, we have to keep in mind that even though we might not be moving forward ourselves, such as in the case where we are running up against a wall, we can still cause our buddies to move forward in our stay, as long as we keep on pressing in whatever direction we want them to move in. Definitely a lot of things to keep track of in the future, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and make our way back to that switch and see if we can't catch up with that mysterious person. expect that. By the movement of those boxes, seems like this is some other means of transportation. Yeah. Seems that in whatever way or direction these lights are heading is the direction that you will be pushed if you're standing inside of them. And looking over to the right, well, it seems like where we are going to need to head in a little bit, but first, there is a little bit of curiosity niggling at my brain. Curious to explore where we saw that person before. Oops. God, I, I just feel really bad whenever I see him drop like that. But, it may not seem initially like you should be able to do anything here, but... There is something hidden away, and you have to be very quick and very careful with how you have your buddies float around, because waiting at the end yeah, is another place for a hidden terminal. Makes me 
wonder who right, who hid this down here. This pretty much gives us a clear idea of what the point of all these space stations might have been, and that's for self-sufficiency and future needs. Seems that these were meant for exploration and quite possibly to make new homes in the far reaches of outer space. It's def definitely a nice idea to think about colonization on some mysterious lands, but for right now, we're just going to propel ourselves forward into story progression. Leave the romanticizing for later. How did you get back here? Why are you following me? Look, it's too late now to apologize. Just let me go. Well, we'll find out what all that means on the next time for The Swapper. See you then.